friends, Miss Amanda here with one more story of the day. We had such a big day at the library that why not do one more story for the night? Because this is a special request from Rory. Shout out to Rory for giving me a suggestion to read The Cat in the Hat. Who knows all about that? Now, like I say in my other videos, if any of you kids ever have any requests that Miss Amanda could read, if you would like me to read a request, you let me know. And I'll give you a shout out for watching my videos. So, thank you, Rory. Shall we get into it? The cat in the hat knows all about that. The Walden household was in an uproar. Mom was getting ready for her big party. Delivery men bustled in and out, and Conrad and Sally were bickering again. Mom went to run some errands and left Mrs. Kwan to babysit. You two behave, Mom said. No sooner had Mom left, Mrs. Kwan fell into a deep sleep and began to snore. It began to rain. Conrad and Sally shifted and, fidget and fidgeted. Quit bugging the fish, Sally snapped at Conrad. You quit it, Conrad snapped back. Suddenly... They heard a loud bump, or was it a thump? What was that? whispered Sally. Nevins the dog growled. Mrs. Kwan snored on. Conrad and Sally crept slowly up the stairs to investigate. They saw something big, something furry. It was... screamed. That have gone better, remarked the cat. Conrad and Sally ran this away and that away, but whichever way they turned, there he was. Who are you? whimpered Sally. I'm the cat in the hat, said he with a bow. Nice place. You two must love it here. We're bored out of our minds, said Conrad. But this house is full of fun, said the cat. He checked the kids with his phenomenon. Yep, he said, you two have a classic case of the worst day evers. I know just the cure. Kids need to forget about the rules and learn to have a little fun. 
The problem with you is that you're old before your time. You're way too uptight. You need to relax, kick back, chill out, pull out all the stops, and enjoy yourself. All right, cried Conrad and Sally, getting into the spirit. Don't listen to him, said the fish. I have a feeling this cat is about to violate all 17 of your mother's rules. Everyone turned to stare. Why, that fish had never said a word before. No, said the cat, let's make cupcakes. They mixed a pound of sugar, two sticks of butter, a pile of hot dogs, ten peanuts, a ration of bacon, and a gaggle of grapes. Then they poured the batter into cupcake tins and slid the whole mess into the oven. What a grand time they were having. Until... Kaboom! The oven exploded purple goop. Don't worry, said the cat. I'll clean this up. He started swabbing up the goopy goo. That's not a towel, cried Sally. That's Mom's party dress. We're doomed, moaned the fish. Oh, what will become of us? Calm down, said the cat. I have an answer to all your cleaning needs. The cat went to the living room where the kids were forbidden to play and opened a crate. Out popped a pair of strange creatures, said the cat. Allow me to introduce you to thing one and thing two. They'll have this place cleaned up in no time. The things each grabbed one end of Mom's dress and snapped it. The stains flew off the dress and landed on the couch. Are you sure these things know what they're doing? asked Sally nervously. The cat shrugged. Sure, they're professionals. Sally and Conrad tried to catch the things, but they were very quick and very tricky. The things ran up the walls and across the ceiling. They rode bikes over the furniture. They left purple tracks everywhere. That poor puppy dog, Nevins, headed for the hills. Why don't we pop outside, have a little fun, and grab the dog while we're at it, asked the cat. Besides, it's too nice to stay inside. What are you talking about? asked Sally. It's pouring. I think the fish is trying to call 911. But when the cat opened the door, sunlight streamed in. 
The search for Nevins led them to a neighbor's birthday party. The cat thought it best for everyone to stay hidden, but he was quickly spotted by kids. Thinking fast, Conrad and Sally tossed candy from behind the bushes. The kids dived into the candy and forgot about the cat. But during all the commotion, Nevins ran off again. That was when the cat magically produced a car. It's my super luxurious omnial directional whatchamajigger, or slow for short. Grab a steering wheel, we can all drive. Having three drivers in one car didn't work so well. Crash! Wow, that was sweet, cried Conrad happily. Walking home, they spotted Nevins in the beauty shop and caught him. Now all they had to do was hurry home and clean before Mom came back. But what a mess they found. Whatever were they to do now? When mom comes home, she would have a fit. How about a game of tennis? Asked the cat. That was the last straw. Get out, shouted Conrad and Sally. After the cat left, Conrad said, why don't you go upstairs, Sally? I'll tell mom it was all my fault. We should share the blame, Sally said. For the first time in a long time, she smiled at him and said, by the way, you're a pretty good brother. I'm glad you think so, said Conrad, returning the smile. Just then, the front door opened, and through it came... driving his super splendiferous house cleaning machine. Conrad and Sally could secretly believe their eyes. When the cleaning crew had finished, the house was spotless. They dry cleaned Mom's dress, scrubbed Conrad and Sally, even gave Nevins a bath, all without waking up Mrs. Quine. I want one of those machines to clean Miss Amanda's house, too. I think all you moms do, too. Goodbye, cat, called Conrad and Sally. Thanks for everything. The cat was still singing as he drove away. The end. Gee, guys, this has been a really great day. I don't know about you, but sealing all your faces today at the library made Miss Amanda's heart the size of the Grinch's heart when it got ten times big. Remember that? My heart was like boom, 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 boom. It was so huge seeing all of you. Well, 
Until next time. And thank you, Rory, for giving us the suggestion to read The Cat in the Hat. Just remember, everybody, if you have any more suggestions and want Miss Amanda to read them, I will. Until next time, guys. Bye.